Meghan Markle's every move is being eagerly watched as her baby's due date rapidly approaches, and unlike most mums to be, the Duchess of Sussex will be expected to follow some odd traditions when giving birth. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's baby is believed to be due in April. While many of the details surrounding the royal birth, including the royal baby's gender, are being kept secret, we do know the child will be seventh in line to the throne. Most details about Meghan's pregnancy are being closely guarded by Kensington Palace but there are a few royal rules Meghan will be expected to follow. Home births are a royal tradition. Home births were part and parcel of a royal pregnancy until Princess Diana gave birth to Prince Harry and Prince William in the Lindo wing of St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington. Kate Middleton has given birth there too but it's believed Meghan plans to stick to the royal tradition and opt for a home birth at Frogmore Cottage, Windsor. The baby's sex is kept secret before the birth. This is one of the only royal traditions that is yet to be broken. Kate and William never revealed the sex of their children before their births and neither have Harry or Meghan, so far. Fathers weren't allowed in the birthing room. Dads, according to royal tradition, were previously banned from the delivery room. This changed when Prince Charles was born and Prince Philip was present for his son's birth. Before then, the custom required someone to be present to confirm a royal birth is actually happening. This led to the Home Secretary being in the room for the Queen's birth in 1926. The Queen must be told first. The Queen has to be the first person to be told about the birth. There's a designated obstetrician and gynecologist. The royal family has its own dedicated obstetrician and gynecologist. Sir Marcus Setchell was the former gynecologist and obstetrician for the Queen and delivered Cade's son, George in 2013. Doctors Alan Farthing and Guy Thorpe Beeston delivered Charlotte and Louis. The Announcement of the Birth It's a tradition that dates back to medieval times, when most of us couldn't read or write, but a town crier is still the one to break the news of the royal birth to the public to this day. The current town crier is Tony Appleton, who announced the birth of Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Modern times mean Kensington Palace are likely to announce the news on Twitter first, but Royal fans will also be able to view a hand-typed announcement of the birth that will go up at the gates of Buckingham Palace, following the baby's arrival. A gun salute. Cannons will be fired across the country, outside Green Park and the Tower of London to celebrate the royal birth. A basic gun salute typically has 21 rounds which are fired at 10-second intervals. But if it takes place in a royal park, like Green Park it lasts 41 rounds. Midwives are sworn to secrecy. Midwives are not allowed to reveal any details of the royal birth. They are reportedly sworn to secrecy. The baby's first official appearance. While we get a quick glance of the baby, either on the steps of the hospital or outside Meghan and Harry's home, soon after it's born. It won't make its first official appearance until he or she is christened. The Christening the royal baby must be christened two or three months after it's born. He or she must wear a traditional gown, a replica of one which spanned 62 royal christenings but was deemed too delicate to continue using in 2004. The royal baby's official title. There used to be a rule that only Prince William's eldest child would get a title, but the Queen changed that in 2012, so now all of William and Kate's children are titled His or Her Royal Highness Prince or Princess name, of Cambridge. This rule has not yet been applied to Harry's children. So as things currently stand if Meghan and Harry's child is a boy his title would be Earl of Dumbarton, and if it's a girl it will be styled similarly to Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor. But the Queen still has time to issue a new title for Meghan and Harry's child. Royal babies don't need a surname. The new royal baby will have a title, and if William and Kate's family to go by then its default surname will be Sussex. But until the early 20th century royal babies didn't have a surname and were known by the names of the countries they ruled. The Queen has custody of all royal children. The Queen has custody of all the royal children because of a royal law. The law, which dates back to 1717 was made after King George I had a major disagreement with his son, the Prince of Wales. 
Harry and Meghan will have to ask the Queen permission to travel with their baby. As strange as it sounds the Queen has final say on many royal child care decisions, including education. Non-royal grandparents used to be disregarded. In the past, grandparents who aren't royal, like Meghan's mom, Doria Ragland, weren't allowed to have a close relationship with the royal child. But this has gradually changed in modern times.